Hello guys, my name is Ivan, and today we are going to be going over the 2017-2018 Hovercraft Science Olympiad event. So let's get started. So what is a hovercraft? A hovercraft is a vehicle or craft that travels over land or water on a cushion of air provided by a downward blast, which would be this fan right here, and it's covered up, but it would be somewhere there is the other fan. So you travel on that cushion of water and get that is the cushion of water that will push the hovercraft up. And you have another fan back here if you can see this one and that one that will push the hovercraft forward. So for Science Olympia, this hovercraft, as you can see, is traveling over water. And this, a Science Olympia hovercraft, is traveling over a table or wood. So you're going to be building a hovercraft that travels over land, quote-unquote, but it's going to be more like a table like this. So how does the hovercraft work? So I explained a bit in the last slide, but if I choose a different color here, so this is the propeller you see right here that blows her downwards. And this is the rear fan, well this would be the central fan, and this would be the rear fan, that blows her backwards, pushing the hovercraft forwards because you're pushing her backwards and then the hovercraft goes forward. So you have a central fan and a rear fan that both work together to make the hovercraft move forward. So your central fan will blow into a skirt, which is this black thing down here, right there, and the skirt creates like a cushion of air which pushes the hovercraft up and reduces the amount of friction. So if you see this picture right here, you see it thrusts air from in front of the fan behind it so that it goes forward. So when you're building a hovercraft, keep in mind, you don't want to block off any air sources because you're taking the air right here and thrusting it through the propeller and pushing it forward. So when you get to competition day, you have two things, two sections rather. So you have, this is the first section and there's the second section. So first you have a track, which is this, right here. And you have to cross the track in a 15 seconds. And you can make either two successful runs across the track or five failed runs. So you wanna get as close to 15 seconds as you can. And the track, this length would be 165 centimeters, which is the distance you want your hovercraft to cross in 15 seconds, and they will have a bunch, probably on a table that has timers and stuff on it, and then there's a written test, which is all about physics. So this year they took out the history portion of hovercraft, probably because it's like really random, so you've at least 20 minutes with questions on physics in different aspects that I'll talk about in the next slide. So let's get on to the next slide. So this is a test portion. So you have a minimum of 20 minutes. And you have three sections. One, two, and three. So you have Newton's laws of motion, which is um, action reaction, which is the third one right there. You have force and impulse, which is the second one. And you have inertia which is the first one. So I just went in a backwards order right there. And you have kinematics, which is projectile velocity, speed, acceleration, and position, which talks about the four kinematic equations. And you have kinetic energy, which is like half m v squared, would be the kinetic energy. Depends on what object you're talking about. And you have calculation of kinetic energy, momentum, and non-relativistic kinetic energy. So what can you use to study? You can use Khan Academy, you can use Crash Course, you can use books, like test prep books for AP Physics 1, you can use other online websites, but make sure they're credible, except one thing, which is important, which I'll highlight in red here, is you need to practice. So there's a couple ways to practice. You can, one, take tests. You can take last year's hovercraft tests, or two, you can do AP Physics 1 tests, but you just want to stick to the motion sections, which is basically what 
the hovercraft test will be on. So now let's talk about the construction of your hovercraft. So it's a 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter by 40 centimeters, the maximum dimensions. So the biggest you can have is like a cube that would have like that. This isn't drawn to scale. 40 centimeters there, 40 centimeters there, and you can have a height of up to 40 centimeters. If you can imagine what I'm drawing right there, just go like that, connect those. You can have a height of 40 centimeters. And then you have to have it move down the track, as you saw in the last slide. And you can only use two motors and two pro propellers that must have shielding. So what I re recommend is having a motor here, pushing downwards on the skirt. And you have a motor back here, which pushes that way, pushing the hovercraft that way. You can only use two motors, each with the propeller or impeller, which basically means two motors, two propellers. And you want to have a dowel for timing purposes that has to stick up 20 centimeters from the lowest base surface. You have a dowel like that. You probably want to put like your team number, say it's eight, and your names, whatever. And you can carry up to 16 stacks of pennies. So each stack of pennies is uh, just go like that. Imagine those are pennies. You have 50 pennies in each stack. And they weigh around 125 grams. And then you have batteries. So, so again, you can have up to 16 stacks of pennies, which would be 125 times 6, which is 2 kilograms or 2,000 grams. And then batteries by the Soink battery policy, you can not have lead or lithium, but you can have any other batteries. And then you can have any integrated circuits with brushless motors, which are motors without brushes, or any integrated circuits such as Arduino or Raspberry. And then let's talk about materials. So for your body of your hovercraft, you can use wood, you can use styrofoam, you can use plastic, etc. You can use anything you want, just make sure it stays. And your propellers, you probably want to use plastic propellers, and I use quadcopter propellers. You can use any propellers you want. You want to stick to plastic ones, though. So motors, you can use any motors. You can use computer cooling fans, quadcopter motors, or maybe, like, tiny truck motors. Not, like, actual big trucks, like toy trucks. And for batteries, you can use alkaline, nickel, mercury, but you cannot use lead or lithium, and you cannot be more than 9 volts. So any given point in your wires, in your motor, anywhere, you can't have more than 9 volts of charge going through. So shielding should be like a cage that protects your propeller from flying out. So this is like your propeller, let's say. So you want to have like a cage around it, and like cage thing to protect if the propeller goes flying out so you have to have holes between them which would be like this hole that is less than three-eighths of an inch and then wires you wanna that's what you use to connect the batteries to everything and try not to short circuit them and use insulation on the bat on the wires to protect yourself. So potentiometer, sorry. So potentiometer is used to change the current of electricity going from your battery to your motors, which spins your propellers. So your potentiometer will go right there, and you could change how much current, how much electricity goes into your motor. So, when we go into do, doing this score, you have your mass score, time score, and if we go to the next slide, you have chart score and impound bonus. So your mass score is 21 points, which is the number of pennies you use, say so you use 8, divided by the most amount of stacks anyone used, so say another team used 16. So 8 divided by 16, multiply that by 21, and you would have a score of 10.5. So your time score is 21 points again, so say your time is 15, exactly on the dot. 15 minus 15 is 0, absolute value of 15, uh, 0 is 0, 0 0.7 times 0 is 0, 21 minus 0 is 21, so you have 21 points. 
And then, um, you charge to go in your impact bonus. So your charge goes 10 points, your impact bonus is 3 points. Charge code is basically making graphs, bar graphs, tables, or, and a diagram of your hovercraft. So you say this is the body, this is the propeller, stuff like that, which is 10 points. An impound bonus is 3 points, which is basically bringing your hovercraft in a box with your team name, number, labeled, labeled on it. So how can you prepare for the hovercraft event? Hovercraft. So you, you have to study physics. You can use anything you want like I told you before. You want to make a working hovercraft, you want to start small, gradually get bigger, don't jump to big stuff right away, because you might mess up. And you want to calibrate the hovercraft so that it crosses a 165 centimeter track in 15 seconds. And can carry the 16 stacks of pennies, which is around 2 kilograms. So tournaments. These are the tournaments I'll be going to. Uh, I don't know about this. I don't know about that either. But anyways, what you want to do when you're going to tournaments is practice your hovercraft. And you want to get better. So let's say you get third at the first tournament you go to. You want to aim for second at the next one. And you want to aim for first at the next one. You just want to gradually get better and better at your at the event and be more equipped to take on better teams so of course you're not gonna get third at regionals second at state and then first at national that's like unheard of but anyways you just want to take those take your mistakes at these invitationals or even regionals and improve your hovercast so it's better at the next competition so if you found this um video helpful please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and check out my latest video right there and peace out